Your mind will collapse if you are unable to answer any questions during the long awaited interviews. This has not happened only with you. We also have experienced similar situations in our life. So here I am in front of you to share my own experience of 10 toughest questions that I have ever faced without wasting your time. Let's begin. Every interview is a gateway for a new opportunity and to live a better life. So losing an interview is more or less like losing your entire life. You will feel that intense pain within yourself at that point of time. That is the moment you will realize that only by improving your knowledge you can get through this phase of life. So here I am going to share those 10 moments where I felt that importance of knowledge. The first one is how do you arrive at high test pressure for any line? This is one of the most simplest and easiest question one should ever face in piping design interviews. That is what I also have assumed and I have responded saying 1.5 times of the design pressure. But the answer is absolute no. Whenever you experience such questions, you have to respond to them with reference to ASME B31.3 formula. What does ASME B31.3 formula says? Hydro test pressure equal to 1.5 times of design pressure multiplied by stress at test temperature divided by stress at design temperature. This is the formula you have to refer. If you are going to tell 1.5 times of design pressure, this is an absolute wrong answer. So please note it down. The second one is, what is the valve handle orientation for a flare line? Generally in piping, you can see most of the valve handles are oriented 90 degree or either at 30 degree or 45 degree to 90 degree based on the accessibility and the convenience of operation. But only in flare line, you will keep it in horizontal position. That is because flare lines are considered to be collection of various fluids from different services. This will contaminate the wedge of any valve. So that is one of the reason why the valve handles of the valve installed in flare lines are kept at horizontal. I also have gone wrong. I have told them it is a vertical 90 degree direction. Third one. What is the difference between a swage and a reducer? I was completely stuck at that point of time. You know why? I have used swage. I have used reducers. But I have never realized the difference between these two. I will tell you what is the major difference between these two. These two does same functions but it is used in different locations. Because swage has an extended length of piping at both ends but reducer does not. So that's one of the reason why swages are only used in places where you have a transition between a butt weld to the socket weld joint or a screwed end joint. This is not applicable for reducer. Fourth, what is hazard? I was able to tell the full form of ASOP, but I was not able to explain the intent of ASOP. ASOP stands for Hazard and Operability Study. This is a session conducted in order to evaluate the risk involved in the projects with respect to different parameters. And each parameters will be assessed to identify the risk involved in a particular project. Certain actions will be taken and those will be ensured to implement in the project. Fifth, what is the difference between SS316 and SS304? I was completely blank because I had prepared for layout, I had prepared for the fittings, I had prepared for stress, but I have not gone in depth about the composition of this material. So what is the major difference between SS316 and SS304? Molybdenum. The presence of molybdenum in SS316 is the major difference between 304 and 316. Sixth, why pneumatic test pressure is always lesser than hydro test pressure? We are aware that pneumatic test pressure is 1.1 times of the design pressure and hydro test pressure is 1.5 times of the design pressure approximately. But I have never known the fact that why it is so less compared to the hydro test pressure. Then I have checked and I found this is the reason for it actually. The compressed energy of the pneumatic system is always higher than the hydrostatic system. So in case of explosion, the energy released from the compressed system of pneumatic will be higher than the hydrostatic. So that will cause a lot of fatality damage than the hydrostatic pressure. That's why pneumatic test pressure is always lesser than the hydrostatic test pressure. Seventh, what is the tensile strength and allowable stress load for a carbon steel pipe A106 grade B? See, I have prepared for fittings. I have prepared for valves, layouts and even the stress concepts and everything. But I have not read specifically about the value of a tensile strength or a yield strength or a allowable load. This is also asked during the interview. So please be prepared before going to an interview. So the answer is 60,000 PSI is the tensile strength for A106 grade B and 20,000 PSI is for the allowable load for a A106 grade B. This is available in B31.3 stress chart. Eighth, what is acoustic vibration in piping? 
I was completely shocked at that point of time. You know why? Because I know about vibration, but I have not heard of the term acoustic. It was completely new to me. Then I read about it. Then I understood about this concept actually. Acoustic vibration in piping is driven by two parameters, flow rate and pressure drop in the pressure reducing items such as either a control wire or relief wire or any items that will reduce the pressure in the line. So this is generally happens in the gas lines where the energies will be reduced in a much more higher rate than in the liquid form. So that is why gas lines are experiences acoustic vibration more often. This is what known as acoustic vibration is about. Ninth, what is weep hole, where it is used and why it is used. During the interview, I felt like I heard of this term somewhere. But I do not know the basis of it. Then I said, I do not know. But the answer is, weep hole is generally sized somewhere around above 6 mm in dia, which is generally placed at the discharge piping of the PSVs in order to drain the residue in the piping. This applies only for the PSVs that is open to atmosphere. And the last but not least, how to finalize the location of drip leg in the steam line? Seriously, during the interview, I felt as if that I was ashamed. You know why? Because I have worked on drip legs. I have worked on steam lines. I know the sizing, the purpose, where it is used. But I never given an importance for the distance between one drip leg to the other drip leg. How to finalize the location? This is what the answer is. Generally, in a superheated steam, you have to maintain 150 meter distance between two drip leg and in saturated steam 50 meter. Again, drip leg is a collection point that is placed wherever there is a low point in order to collect the condensate. So if you find any low point within this given distance, then you have to place the drip leg. So this is the right answer for this question. So these are the 10 toughest question I have ever faced until I was 10 years experienced. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandran.